Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be continuing on with the repair on my Corolla tailgate and today we're going to be doing the primer, prep and painting stage. So, well originally this video here was just going to be the primer and prep work stage but as it turned out I actually lost a fair bit of footage. I don't know, I think the camera must have actually turned off so it was either battery died on a big prep session or the camera overheated because they do actually do that on me these gopros they do overheat sometime anyway all that aside let's just continue on with this job so in the previous video we did do the repair stage so we knocked it up there was a a decent sized dent in the tailgate we knocked it up and then we did the body filler stage so i actually used some uh, uv body filler it's really good stuff that's actually why you might even still be able to notice that it's sort of semi-transparent the UV body filler actually has to be transparent so that the light can penetrate all the way down to the bottom. Um, and one of my favorite things about that UV body filler is that it never seems to pinhole up. I think I've had it once get a couple of small pinholes in it, but um, you'll see once I get this uh, first and I guess more so the second coat on when I get a wet coat on, you'll notice that there is not even one pinhole on a, on a repair that size, that's pretty impressive. Um, so I obviously didn't even have to go around and pick up any pinholes either. So I, like to get it there, I didn't even, I didn't specifically go out and fix any pinholes. So yeah, that UV body filler, it also won't shrink back on you either because it's a single pack, like it's, it's only got the, the body filler, like there, there's no hardeners in there. So it's not like your standard two-pack body fillers where um, it still cures over over time, so it needs the heat to cure up properly. So as you can see there, that there's not even one little um, pinhole at all in that entire repair. So really, really good stuff. So you may have noticed that I'm using the Autothane two-pack primer, and look, I'm I got it because it's cheap to be honest and um, we use PPG at work so I just uh, decided to use the same paint supply that we use at work and um, yeah this is a PPG brand so Autothane is like the entry level PPG brand and look I'm gonna have to say it's not that bad it's better than what I expected um, it's got a nice build to it it hasn't shrunk back at all so obviously that's been helped by putting the lights on it so I gave I think it was, yeah, half an hour on the, the infrared lights to make sure it cures up nicely. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any shrink back, so obviously didn't have any shrink back in the body filler. Um, and yeah, so I painted this car like two weeks ago, and I still have a look at it every day, or at least, you know, whenever I, I'm near my car, um, and there is not one bit of shrink back. So I'm pretty impressed with that, pretty happy with that. The primer's good, and the body filler's really good, and even the clear coat's good. So I use the Autothane. Uh, clear coat as well as it turned out. I'm actually going to be flow coating this job So that's going to be coming up in the next video, but this video here um, Yeah, we're just going to be doing as I say the primer prep and base coat stage So the sanding blocks I'm using are the pinkies blocks and yeah, they're dustless sanding blocks now You're probably thinking hey if they're dustless Why don't you have your vacuum plugged in and that was just because at this time I didn't have a vacuum cleaner at home. I have one at work I didn't have one at home. So I ended up just ordering a flex vacuum cleaner and another orbital sander. So I do have that now. So in future videos, I'll be keeping the garage a little bit cleaner when I am doing my dry sanding. So yeah, both orbital sanding and blocking, I'll be doing dustless. So that'll be definitely good for future projects for me. It's getting a little bit dusty there, but look, one thing that I was gonna have a quick mention to is the directional sanding. That's one thing that I do a lot of, and you'll notice that most of my blocking is done in that same direction. And that's because that's the shape of the panel. I mean, whenever I do it, there's always someone in the comments that seems to disagree with me. They're like, oh, you shouldn't be blocking it like that, like, rah, rah, rah. And it's like, man, Look, I respect your way of doing it. If you block a different way, that's fine. Like, and it's not to say that I don't do any cross hatching because I do do some, but most of the, I would say like 90% or 95% of the blocking is gonna be done in that direction, or the direction of the panel. And I'm not saying you have to do it that way. I'm just saying this works for me. One of my old bosses actually told me that years ago he saw me 
doing um, like some cross hatching and even maybe circle work or whatever um, with my blocks and he just he pulled me up and he said hey dude do directional sanding and, and I thought to myself I'm like you know what that makes sense and like in principle um, so I started doing it and I'm like yeah you know what that's actually the way to go so I know I'm not the only one that does it like that um, but look and uh, let's have a, a discussion about it if you think you've got a better way of blocking the car like tell me but don't like don't be a, a dick about it I guess it's, um, yeah, like, don't don't try and tell me I'm doing it wrong, because if you look at the end result, like, you, you can't say that that's wrong, because it, it looks right. Whatever I'm doing works for me, I guess. If you think you know better, like, I'm not telling you what you have to do. Yeah, I think there was one guy in the comments, he's like, Oh, some guy from Australia telling, um, like, someone from the UK, like, being Gavin Ping. He, he thought I was telling him how to do his job, and it's like, no, <laughs> he sent the blocks out to me, so that I could do a review on them. Like, I, I, never, I was never telling him how to do his job. I'm like, I'm just like, dude, I'm, this is how I block a car. The cars come up pretty nice and straight when I use his block, so I'm really happy with them. Anyway, I'm ranting. So, the footage that we did lose was the orbital sanding stage and uh, sanding all the edges. So, I guess it wasn't too much, but yes, um, after I blocked it, so I did the block work with 180 grit, I then hit it with 320 grit on the orbital sander. I then sanded all the edges with 500 grit. I then went 800 grit to finish it off. And then 1000 grit on all the edges uh, by hand. So yeah, 800 grit was the, the last orbital. So because I'm working from home, I had to buy all my own supplies and stuff like that. So I made a mention to it in another video, but I just went for the top of the range sandpapers. I don't know, I've just found it can be a bit of a false economy, getting all the cheap ones. Now if you use the cheap ones, again, if they work for you, go for it. Like I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to do your job. I'm just telling you how I do it. And look, I've even, I changed my mind. Um, look, I, if I was to look back at the way I did things five years ago, and I do do it sometimes, because I've got all this, uh, these catalogs of videos, like I look back the way I did stuff five years ago, I'm like, man, there's no way I'd do all that now. You know, so I guess um, we've got to give people or each other and even ourselves room to improve um, as a painter and just don't be so sure that someone's stupid just because they do something different, you know what I mean? Like, because I would look back at myself sometimes and I'd be, huh, have a look at that idiot, what's he doing? You know, like I wouldn't even do it that way, so... Yeah, like you've always got to um, evolve and, and change. But yeah, the gun I'm using is the DV-1S. I absolutely love this gun. I reckon it's the best minigun on the market by far. Like, I reckon easily, yeah, hands down. It's expensive. I've actually done a review on it. Um, I think, yeah, some people did actually criticize me in that video because I probably didn't go hard enough on how expensive it was. But... Look, I just think that this is such a good gun that if you can justify the money, you will not be disappointed at all. But the reason I decided to use this gun was because I'm painting from home, obviously, and I didn't have as big a compressor as we have at work. Now, to be fair, the compressor I have actually seems to be pretty damn good. Um, but because this was like the first job, I just wasn't quite sure, so I thought, hey, I'll bring the minigun, I'll bring the full-size gun, I'll see how the minigun goes, I'll then see how the full-size gun goes, and as it turns out, I would have been right to use the full gun, uh, the full-size gun, I wouldn't have even needed to use this minigun. Um, so yeah, like on a job this size in future, yeah, I probably would use a full-size gun, uh, probably wasn't quite necessary to use a minigun, um, but it definitely didn't do any harm, put it that way. Um, another thing, I decided to use the infrared lights in between coats because um, just as you may have noticed when I was doing all my sanding, I'm kicking up all that dust. Um, in the spray booth, we'd probably um, use like the air blowers to, to dry in between coats, but I would imagine doing that at home, you'd just go and dislodge little bits of dust in all the corners of your, your garage and you'd just end up with little specks of dust all through your paint job. Now, as it turned out, I still got that. I actually still did get little bits of dust all through the paint job. So yeah, it's obviously not perfect conditions painting in your garage. You might have even just noticed a fly there on screen. Luckily, it didn't land into my paint job. Um, but yeah, just be realistic about your expectations if you are painting from home. That's the biggest thing I would say. Um, at the end of the day, like, 
I managed to get this job done in pretty good time. It was actually fun for me to do it at home. It's a bit of a different environment. You don't have the boss. You don't have times to think about. So um, you're not being hounded to get it done. But in saying that, like once I had the place, like my garage set up the way I wanted it set up, it was actually pretty smooth sailing. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it took me a while to set the garage up exactly how I wanted it, and it's not fully fully done yet. I actually, as of making this video, I actually didn't have the extraction fan set up because for whatever reason I ordered it and then it just didn't come out, so they refunded me. I had to order it again. It's actually still not out. So the next video that we do is going to be the clear coat stage on the tailgate of this little Corolla. But once this Corolla job is finished, we're going to be doing my friend's car. So my mate Genie, his his girlfriend has a, a heavily faded VW Golf bonnet. So by the time I, I'm not even gonna get that job in into my garage until we get the extraction. But yeah, as I say, like I'll be doing updates on the garage and we'll be doing more jobs in this garage. So I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys can learn a couple of things as we move along. I'm going to have to be honest and say I think my channel had been getting a little bit stagnant in the last couple of years. I think the videos were getting a little bit same, same. So I think me um, and this garage is going to be yeah what we needed, I think, on this channel to reinvigorate it. But as I was saying before about the block work, whatever I'm doing is working for me. There is no ripples at all in that tailgate. It's nice and straight. And considering that hasn't been polished yet, I reckon it looks pretty damn good. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed watching this one. And be sure to stick around for next week's video. And we'll be doing the clear coat stage. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.